If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentiles do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar call, so good night unto you all. Give me your hands, if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. Ah, yes, yes, there's nothing in the world like love, no bloom like its bloom, not a thing can you mention that has more flavor and more savor. Upon my soul, it's more surprising that cooks, with all their use of spices, don't use this one spice that excels them all. Why, when you spice a dish with love, it'll tickle every palate, I do believe. Not a thing can either salt or sweet without a dash of love. It will turn gall, bitter though it be to honey, and old curmudgeon to a pleasing and polished gentleman. That's right. I am Kira. And what can you do? Kill me right here? Hear this. I'm not only Kira, but I am also God of the New World. Kira has become law in the world we now live. He's the one who's maintaining order. I have become justice, the only hope for mankind. Kill me? Is that really the right thing to do? Since Kira's appearance six years ago, wars have stopped and global crime rates have been reduced by over 70%. But it's not enough. This world is still rotten, with too many rotten people. Somebody has to do this. When I first got the notebook all those years ago, I knew I had to do it. No, I was the only one who could. I understood that killing people was a crime. There was no other way. The world had to be fixed. A purpose given to me. Only I could do it. Who else could have done it and come this far? Would they have kept going? The only one who can create a new world is me. Listen, people are gonna do what they do, especially your brother. You were probably too young to remember this. I was five, so D was four, and we're playing Power Rangers. We've created this epic wild animal gladiator battle type scenario, and it's getting kind of intense, so we're on break. And we're knocking back some Kool-Aids and whatnot. And all of a sudden, he leans over, all secretive. And he's like, I'm going to the zoo tomorrow. And I'm thinking, cool, we're going to the zoo tomorrow. Because you know how I do. I don't like to miss events. So I clear my schedule for the next day. When I come over here in the morning, your mom answers the door. And she calls for D. And he doesn't come. And I say, he's not still sleeping, is he? We got to get to the zoo. And your mom looks at me like, zoo? And I walk with her back to Dee's room, and that little baller has bounced. I'm saying like Kunta Kante bounced, for real. Got up early, put some miles behind him before the sun came up. This kid was not playing, and he was actually going the right direction too, is the crazy thing. Because when the cops finally find him, he's like on the route. But I'm just remembering waiting right here looking at the door terrified because to me at the time the dangerous thing about going to the zoo without a grown-up was one of the animals would eat you so i've got these visions of d like standing at the snack shop trying to buy a five dollar hot dog and then a bear tackles him and it's over and i don't have a best friend anymore you know and as far as my five-year-old brain is concerned the probability of that happening is like 95 percent. so i'm basically in morning and then the door opens and it's your mom and she's got d in her arms and he's looking straight up pissed he's looking grown man angry because he wasn't finished with his business know what i'm saying and your mom is just crying and crying because you know she thought she had lost her baby and the only thing i could think was dartrell's 
invincible. He wrestled the bear and he won. He doesn't even have a scratch. And I've never doubted him and I've never worried about him ever since. That's on the real.